Ai, Trimon, Jesus Christ. How to cast out the demon? Okay, we know that the Bible says that the spirit of prophet is subject to the control of the prophet. If the spirit of prophet is subject to the control of the prophet, the spirit of man is subject to the control of man. If the spirit of man is subject to the control of man, the person may say that we must shake. Then, uh, then that person will shake, even though there's no anointing on that person. If there's no anointing on that person and the person shake, when I see it in the spirit realm, I just leave the person because I know that the uh, power has not come up from my hand. You know, when the woman who has a bleeding of 12 years, she touched the edge of Jesus' shirt and then Jesus, Jesus perceived that power has left him and he asked around, who has touched me? If I did not perceive power coming up from my hand, and I see the person that I'm praying for is shaking. I know that this person shaking is fake. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit did not touch the person. That person just shake because he thinks in his mind that he must shake. Okay, you know everybody can shake if you want to shake. Everybody can shake. Okay, so this is how we discern the gift of discernment. When you walk with God to a certain extent, you you know. So it's not all demons that the person need to fall down. Okay, you're back on the floor. You're back on the floor. Once the person's back is on the floor, then you say it's delivered. Uh, sometimes you can see what is happening in the spiritual realm. The person may still be manifesting and then the person is free. I, I can't count. There are countless times where I say that you are free. Even though the person is still manifesting violently. We trust the voice of the Holy Spirit more than we trust what we are seeing. This man, John, is free. But you are still seeing he is still manifesting. Don't worry, he is free. This man is not manifesting. But he, I mean, he, he is still not free. We trust the voice of the Holy Spirit more than we, we see things. If indeed you have moved on the realm of imaginations. Okay, level one is God talk to me in my imaginations. If you can reach beyond this level, okay, you trust the voice of the Holy Spirit in you more than what you are seeing. But if you are still at that level one of imaginations, okay, you continue to walk in sight first. Okay, it's not possible to walk in faith when you are still in imagining. Uh, keep on read the Bible, fast and pray until as God leads you. Okay, once you hit that level, uh, move on. Okay, many of us we have the Holy Spirit, we just have yet to exercise them. You know, you know, we, we have to exercise with the Holy Spirit, we have to know how the Holy Spirit works. Why is it that every week uh, people say that affliction, that setback, out of you, out of you? Every Sunday, you hear the same thing out of you, affliction, setback, poverty, out of you. And you receive the prayer like this. Okay? But nothing happened. Why nothing happened? Because God is saying something else. Your situation does not need cast and bind. Your situation is just God needing you to read the Bible more often. That is it. It's not all prayer requests that we need to cast and bind. Okay? No. Your prayer request is you needing to go closer to God. Not to cast out Satan away from you. You know, it's two different things. To pray to cast devil out of your life versus you praying to God, Lord Jesus, I need you more. 99% of our prayer today is, Satan, I punch you out of my life. Devil, out of my life. A better prayer is you saying, Lord Jesus, I am your humble servant. Let me go closer to you. This is a better prayer. Because when you pray to go closer to God, it's automatically you casting and binding Satan out of your life. Okay, when you go closer to God, Satan is leaving you. But if you are focusing to pray that Satan leave you, you are conscious of his presence with you. Satan like it. Aha! Uh -huh. This woman every night Pray in tongues. Pray that devil leave him. 
I'm happy because he is always thinking about me. But if you're praying to go closer to God, you're ignoring Satan's presence. He will, he will automatically leave you. Um, Self-deliverance is, is possible. It's the same result. The Bible says what? The Bible says that every sin that you commit outside your body, okay, that is outside your body. But if you commit sexual sin, this is the sin that is inside your body. If the sin that you commit is inside your body and not outside, self-deliverance is easy. The Pharisees and the Jews have demons in them. As it is written in the Gospel of John, your father is the devil, Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees. Jesus Christ can cast out demons, right? Hmm? Jesus Christ can cast out demons. But why did Jesus Christ not cast out the demons from the Pharisees? Hmm? Rather, he took a boat and go somewhere else to cast out demons from two men who live in the tombs. So this is how we cast out demons. Okay, the person's heart has to be ready to receive in order for this deliverance to take place. So if you are asking prayer for someone else and that person is still living a life of drunkenness and orgies, I mean, uh, if God does not help him, who is the man of God to overstep God? So salvation is individual. Salvation is not influential. The Canaanite woman stand, in, stand on behalf for her demon-possessed daughter, isn't it? And Jesus Christ said, it is not good to throw the food to the dogs. Jesus Christ was testing this Canaanite woman's faith. And then her daughter, who was demon-possessed, was cured. Why did this miracle took place? How come this mother can stand on behalf of her daughter and the daughter got cured? It's because the daughter is still under the mother's care. The daughter is still a young girl. But once the daughter is an adult, has the ability to make its own decisions, she has to be the one to ask for prayer herself.